Hello. For this session, I want to talk about blockchain. And I want to talk about blockchain in particular and not just about its partner, Bitcoin. So blockchain is a very big idea. It's a very powerful group of technologies that make something like Bitcoin possible. But we can make blockchains without having to use Bitcoin. And because of that, this technology is kind of way beyond just Bitcoin or even other coins. And to explain blockchain, I suggest that you read a tutorial because it is very complicated and not really my intent here to explain it. But it is called or can be understood as a distributed ledger, as a distributed accounting, where instead of having all the accounting all the books, all the logs in one place, it is distributed. And it's distributed by the people who are using it and benefiting from it. It's that decentralization that gives it its power. Because rather than having a central place that you may need to trust, or could be mistrusted or abused, you have a decentralized places, a decentralized system, and you have the advantages and the disadvantages of decentralization. The advantages of decentralization is that it's very easy to repair. It's very hard to injure. Um, because if you take down a center or a set of books, if you take a server off, you still have the rest of the server going and everything is being decentralized. And so there is no loss. So it's, things are more robust. They are more powerful and adaptable. The disadvantage is generally decentralized systems are less efficient. They are often slower. They often are not as efficient in terms of resource use, including money and energy. And this is true of the blockchain system. So blockchain is a way to distribute the ledger, the accounting, and because of that, you can also distribute trust. But the price of that distribution and decentralization is that it's not very efficient. And it's also wastes a lot of energy to make this system work. Now, there are ideas, it's a big idea, and there are ideas about how to overcome that, which I'll get to in a few minutes. But in general, it will always remain, it, a blockchain system, will always remain less efficient than a centralized one. And again, that is the cost of having a decentralized system. Centralization tends to make things more efficient. And if that's a criteria, as it might be if you're trying to do accounting, um, there are some advantages to it, and there are many disadvantages to it. So. Um, right now, um, blockchain uh, is used not just for Bitcoin, but for many other coins as a basis to make a currency of exchange that does not have a central location, meaning that um, it can be done at a low level, at the grassroots level, in kind of a crowd-sourced way. So that is kind of having a currency like that is useful in several ways. One is that it's useful in places where the central bank is not very effective in places of their developing world. Or where the central bank um, is too greedy and it is cost, they charge too much for their services. So you have a decentralized thing that's really kind of owned by nobody. That kind of a currency can be used very, very cheaply um, because there's no central cost, there's no central bankers to pay, etc. There's another reason to, to want a centralized, uh, a decentralized currency, and that is if you're trying to do something that a government does not approve of. So here you have something that is outside of the government. That could be criminals, or that could be something revolutionary, or that could be just something that is um, uh, political, or that could be something that is 
um, transnational. So there's, there's a bunch of different reasons why you'd want to have a decentralized um, currency. And there's also the reason why you'd not want to have it, which is that you would believe that it is immune to the cycles that plague most businesses and, and, and national economies. So even if you were just a, a huge patriot, you still might want to have a currency that was not in the central banking system because it actually would um, withstand and be outside of the kind of natural fluctuations that and political winds that affect national currencies. But coins themselves, because they're not based on any um, fiat currency or wealth or gold or paper or government, themselves are often very volatile. And this is one of the arguments against Bitcoin as a currency. It is serving more as a time, kind of a gold or a lottery rather than a currency because it is so volatile. It goes up and down and the currency is not stable and it's so unstable that it's very hard to actually spend it because you never know whether things are going to go up or down and it is being held in a speculative way. So that's the coins. But then there is the many other things that we could imagine blockchain being used for. This technology of decentralizing accounting not just useful for a currency, but for many other things. And there are hundreds, if not thousands, of experiments right now of trying to imagine what we could do with a decentralized accounting system. And we have things like a smart contracts, which are used to negotiate um, trust, to negotiate um, uh, acceptance of, of conferring approval, even though there's no central agency that is giving that approval. It's giving it through the network as a whole. And there are ways in which you could use a blockchain-like system to do all kinds of necessary things. If we imagine a world called Mirror World, where you have many people contributing virtual artifacts, virtual objects, virtual places, and you're trying to knit them together into a single world, you need some way to verify that things are legitimate or not, that they are not just counterfeits. And that would overwhelm a central agency trying to approve everything, but you could distribute that approval into a blockchain system. So that the approval is being done at the edges, it's being done everywhere. And that's the kind of a system that you would need to have a mirror world. You could also imagine other uh, reasons of tracking the, 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 the province, the, the, the authenticity of a product being made somewhere to make sure it wasn't counterfeit. You could also embed in some ways a blockchain system into the artifact in some way that would ensure its authenticity in a distributed way rather than having a central agency or clearinghouse try to approve things. So as we look at the world in its huge size, a global world of 8 billion people doing many, many kinds of things, which all need to be verified or approved or trusted, a blockchain-like system to help in that makes a lot of sense. It is in, very inefficient though. It, it costs things, it costs us energy and other factors to approve higher than it would a centralized one, but that cost may be worth paying because it's really hard to imagine a centralized system being able to do that. So um, there are in the laboratories many experiments to figure out how you can do a blockchain without going through the mining of a coin. So most blockchains in the very beginning needed Bitcoin. Bitcoin needed a blockchain, blockchain needed a Bitcoin in order for them both to work. You had to have miners doing computation in order of a coin in order to make the blockchain work. We've since come to understand that that's not absolutely necessary, that you can have other, other ways to verify the system other than proving work. You can also prove stakeholders. You can prove you have other proofs. And 
these are all right now being tested, being experimented with. Part of the penalty, part of the cost of Bitcoin was this huge use of electricity, which is kind of a waste because it's not really producing anything really valuable. It's just producing more, a few more Bitcoins that may or may not be worth anything. And that cost, that environmental cost, that energy cost is continuing to rise. And so there are alternative methods to actually ensure the veracity of a blockchain without doing huge computational cycles. All these things are being experimented with, sometimes with alternative coins, sometimes with just alternative blockchain systems. There's even attempts to bridge different blockchain, blockchain systems together so that you have like the internet of blockchains, the network of blockchains, there is more work on making smart contracts. There are ways of trying to overcome those deficiencies of the slow decentralization. There's lightning networks, which kind of do some of the computation on another network that's in parallel. There are lots of very clever and brilliant experimentation. What there isn't been, what there hasn't been so far, are actually implemented large-scale systems put into real use. And I think that's what most people are waiting for, is a implemented use of blockchain besides the coins, so we can kind of see how it actually works in real life, so we can see how it scales up or it doesn't scale up. I think we're going to be seeing those in the next 10 years. Um, there are lots of pilot programs where they're trying things. This is an entirely new kind of technology. It's very abstract. It's very um, conceptual in many ways. Um, I think there are far more solutions than there are problems to be used for it right now. And we're just kind of figuring out what is really good for, what it's the best technology for. Um, and I, so I think that in the next 10 years, we'll see a lot more attempts to use blockchain, but I think for the most part, it will be invisible. It's a kind of technology like plumbing or electrical wiring where you aren't going to see it. It, only, it, will, it, will, it will succeed to the extent that it's actually invisible. It's like encryption. Encryption is used every day but most of us don't even see it, and we don't want to see it. It's one of those enabling technology that works behind the scenes and does its job, and if we, if we see it, that actually means that it's not working. And I, blockchain will be very much like encryption in the sense that when it works, it will not be visible. It will just be working there. And so it's not so much a consumer-facing technology, or it shouldn't be, it should be one of those things that we don't even notice. Just things work and they work a little better. So uh, that's what I think we'll see in the next 10 years is more applications of blockchain. But you're not going to see it unless you're really looking for it. As to the future of Bitcoin, the honest truth is I have no idea. I have no idea we'll, whether Bitcoin will continue to rise, whether it will continue to fall, whether it will continue to oscillate. I have no idea. And honestly, nobody has any idea. It's still very much a lottery. And so um, uh, that I can't say anything about. But blockchain seems to be a technology that will be useful in a way that encryption has been useful as a behind-the-scenes infrastructural necessity that is useful in particular cases where we want to pay the price of decentralizing a system. Not, it's not the answer for everything, and sometimes we're not going to want to pay that price, but there will be many applications that will need something that's decentralized and we're willing to pay that price in order to have that kind of distributed trust. So that's what I think is ahead for blockchain.